So I don't know if any of you have noticed, but I kind of have a loud speaking voice. <laughs> Did you notice? <laughs> I mean, not, not all the time. And honestly, I, I think I've said this before, it's somewhat of an act. I'm actually more introspective and quiet in my default setting, in my downtime. Slightly more, anyway. But when it's time to speak, I can get up for that conversation, which is a good thing while I'm up here talking to you. If I lost power in my microphone, I could probably still make myself heard to most of you. I can project if I need to. I can project when I don't need to, too. <laughs> my brother and I often say that in our family of origin, we didn't fight so much, we didn't yell, we were just competing to see who could agree with each other the most loudly. Maybe that's just what happens when there's four kids. There's chaos, there's noise, things have a tendency to get loud. Things do have a tendency to get loud. There's a lot of yelling going on all around us, all the time. The thing about living in a society where a lot of things are dependent upon individual people taking interest in those things is that, well, a lot of the work that a lot of people do is part of a competition for our attention. And if the way I just phrased it sounded confusing to you, let me put it more clearly. If it seems like there's a lot of yelling at you and around you all the time, it's probably because there is a lot of yelling. And in most cases, the reason that there's a lot of yelling probably has something to do with who wants your money and how they're trying to get you to give it to them. Sometimes they do it directly. This will make you happier, and the prices have never been lower. And sometimes they do it indirectly. This terrifying problem is terrifying, and it can only be solved by me. With, of course, your support. Act now. We have limited and divided attention. And we've decided, it's been decided for us, that we're going to live in such a way that almost all things, good things and bad things, and mostly indifferent, neutral things, did you know that you can stream the latest, cutest thing on the internet for only $6.99 a month? All these things have to capture our attention in order to get our support. And so there's a lot of yelling around us. It's not always loud. It's not always angry. The ad users just get better and better at their craft, despite notable missteps. But a lot of it is loud. And a lot of it is angry. There's a lot of anger. There have been sociological studies that show that anger, in fact, literally can change people's opinions. And while that may be good to get you to do something that it's for the worse, objectively. The people in the study answered the question such as, all human beings are born with inherently equal worth, and I believe in human rights, and were then shown pictures of things that made them agitated, made them upset, made them angry and asked to answer the same questions again after seeing the pictures, and their positive responses dropped significantly. They were less likely to answer yes affirmatively to those questions. Their answers changed for the worse. Being angry makes us worse. It makes us less good and less gracious and less loving than we want to be. It makes our opinions worse and our decisions worse makes ourselves worse. And one of the best ways that I've found to start to make people angry is to yell at them. Let's be honest. There are reasons to be angry in the world that we live in. There are people that are being forgotten about. There are people that are holding on by the very thinnest of threads, and nobody knows it. There is swirling confusion, oppressive injustice, malicious exploitation and people all around defending things that are indefensible and turning a blind eye to how very unfair some things have gotten. 
We know that Jesus got angry at those exact same things. There are reasons to be angry. And there are reasons to yell, too, mostly because of that capturing your attention thing that I talked about. We have to yell because everybody and everything else is yelling. We have to yell to be heard over the TV. We have to yell to be heard over the street noise. We have to yell to be heard over the kids. We have to yell just to get somebody, anybody, to look over here, look up here. I make the joke to a Maya up here sometimes, but the main reason I became a pastor is because they give you a microphone and a captive audience. I get this. Nobody else has this. So you're stuck listening to me talk until I decide it's time to stop. Or until Tracy cuts me off. <laughs> but the fact is there's a tiny kernel of truth in that because I need your attention too. The church needs your attention and your support. But that is superficial compared to why we're really here together. I believe. And I think you believe, too, that we're looking for some different way, some path through the noise and the yelling and the confusion and the, the mess that leads us out of anger and out of frustration and out of injustice and into mercy, into kindness, into peace, not just as some nice words to say, some idealized conditions, but as a way, the way of our lives, the way that we live and decide and move through the world. We want to move with mercy. We want to move with kindness. We want to move bringing peace with us. This is the way, the way that we're looking to be, right? I hope so. If I am, then we need to stop sometimes and take stops, take account, consider, pay attention to how we're doing it. And I guess, I hope, that that's part of the point of the microphone. But we don't want to be people who yell. We can't be. Most of us, we're lucrative, most of us, and that means we're introverts, most of us, studies have shown. And so we're better at carrying all of our thoughts and all of our emotions, the good ones and the worst selves ones, close to the best, revealed only to a few. But even if we're the heart in our sleeve, put it all out there, might even be accused of being too loud type of person, I know any of those. We probably still don't want to yell. Because we don't want to be a part of this yelling culture. And practically, because when everybody's yelling, the yelling just becomes noise. Back up. Oh, this is it. You can't yell people into following Jesus. You can't yell people to love, or to mercy, or to peace. Fundamentally, you can't because yelling turns into noise and gets ignored, and also because yelling makes people angry. And angry people become worse versions of themselves. The Gospel says that John the Baptist, who, let's be honest, was probably an angry yeller, was the living embodiment of a consistent biblical theme, the voice of the people cried out to God when they were enslaved in Egypt. The prophets cried out to God on behalf of the people and to the people on behalf of God. The broken and despairing cried out to Jesus. Jesus said to those who told him to get his followers under control, if you shut them up, the very rocks on the ground will cry out. A voice cries out, the Bible says. What does it cry? That there is a different way. There is a path, a road through the wilderness of noise and confusion and despair. There is a different way. And there's always a voice saying it in the Bible, and there's always a voice saying it in our hearts, even when we're too distracted or too angry to listen to it. There is a different way from the competition for attention from real or stubbornly insistent ignorance about the marginalized and oppressed, the ones God loves, there is a different way from self-regard and self-interest and going it alone. A voice cries out. It cries out in our hearts, even, and we can repeat it in our lives. It's urgent and insistent and committed. It doesn't have to speak loudly, but we can repeat what it says. Repeat 
its urgency and its insistence, repeated even out loud, there is a different way. A way where we care for each other, a way where we are merciful to all, even the ones who make us angry. A way where we are committed, every day, all the time, to being the best version of ourselves. Come what may. A way where Jesus isn't just a name we invoke, but is a model for life. A teacher that we are still today learning from. A guide that is just ahead of us in this life, in this world. We say that in Advent we are waiting for the coming of the Savior. And that's seasonally true and a good ritual reminder that we wait in hope for the dawning of new and better days. But we also know that Jesus is already here, here in our gathering here in the communion meal, here in our lives, ready to be embodied by our service and our sharing the work of our hands and the love in our hearts. And Jesus is not yelling at us. Jesus is inviting us to follow him on the different way, the way to God's justice and to unending mercy and to the peace that passes all understanding. May that peace guard and strengthen and open our hearts and our minds today and every day. Amen.